everyone. So this video is split into two parts. The first part covers continuity and what it means for a function to be continuous. And then in the second half of the video, we talk about differentiability and its relationship to continuity. So here we go. So let's start with continuity. Without getting too heavy into the mathematical definitions, I like to just think of a function being continuous if you can draw it with one stroke of the pen. This means we can draw it with no gaps or breaks in the function. So if we think about putting a function on some axes, we want to be able to start on the left hand side and finish on the right hand side without any breaks or gaps. This would be a continuous function. But not all functions are continuous. So if a function has a vertical asymptote, this is not continuous at that vertical asymptote. This makes sense with our casual definition of continuity. We have to lift the pen where the vertical asymptote is to create that break in the function. Also, just some vocabulary, we call the points where the function is not continuous discontinuities. So we would say this graph has a discontinuity at the vertical asymptote. Another way we can have discontinuities in a function is if there is a hole in the graph. So this means we are drawing with our pen, but there's a point where we can't draw because that output value doesn't exist. So holes in the graph are also discontinuities. There is a certain type of hole in the graph that often shows up, and I just want to highlight it here. So it's called a jump discontinuity. It's basically just where the function has a break where then the output resumes at a different place from where it was initially. There are more formal ways to define jump discontinuities using limits, but for right now, we're just going to focus on what it looks like in the graph and just noting that it is a discontinuity. It's a place where the function isn't continuous. So it's also worth noting that a function is only continuous on its domain. So if we have endpoints on the function and we look outside of those endpoints, the function isn't continuous there. So we really talk about where the function is continuous. And if we're not on the domain, if we're like somewhere where the function isn't, it's not continuous there. Okay, so let's summarize this. We have three ways that the function has discontinuities. First is at vertical asymptotes. Second is at holes in the graph. And third is if we are outside the domain of the function. Okay, so why do we care about continuity? In the context of calculus, it is important because at places where the function isn't continuous, the derivative doesn't exist. So the derivative doesn't exist at the places where the function isn't continuous. That's because when it's not continuous, we can't draw a tangent line at those points, and so we don't know what the derivative is at those points. So when we're talking about taking the derivative or finding the derivative or computing the derivative, we just want to be careful that it can only happen at places where the function is continuous. Okay, so let's talk more specifically about the ability to take a derivative. So we call this differentiability. It's just the ability to take a derivative at a point. Just remember that instead of saying take a derivative, we can say differentiate. So differentiability is the ability to differentiate. So we already briefly mentioned that we can't take a derivative at places where the function is discontinuous, but there are other reasons that you can't take a derivative. So if we can think about a graph that looks something like this with this corner on it, so all the points on the left side of the corner have the same tangent line and all the points on the right side of the corner have the same tangent line, but we don't really know what to do with that point in the middle at that corner. We also call this a cusp, so the function is not differentiable at that corner. There are more formal ways to talk about this, but hopefully it makes sense that we just can't have the derivative there. Let me show you another example just to make this more clear. So if we have a positive slope on the left side and then a constant slope on the right hand side, we can see that it's hard to know what that tangent line should be. At that corner, do we take the average of the two slopes? Do we try to just guess in some smart way? Well, turns out there just isn't really a smart enough way for us, and so we say that the function is not differentiable at that corner or cusp. So another way that a function cannot be differentiable is at an endpoint. So outside of the domain, the function isn't continuous, but at the endpoint, the function is also not differentiable. Because if we try to think of what the tangent line does, we really only know what's happening, for example, on this graph to the right. We only know what's happening on one side of the function. We don't know what happens past the end. So again, we can prove this using limits or talk more specifically about why this is true, but I just want to really emphasize that we can't take the derivative at an endpoint, and it's because we can't really draw a tangent line there accurately. 
So as we mentioned before, when the function isn't continuous, so at places where it is discontinuous, you also cannot take the derivative. So a function must be continuous in order to take the derivative there. So for example, if we have a vertical asymptote, the function is not differentiable at that vertical asymptote. So functions are not differentiable at discontinuities. And this can be any of the discontinuities we talked about in the previous section. So vertical asymptotes, holes, or outside the domain of the function. Okay, so to summarize, the places that are not differentiable on a function, or the places where the derivative does not exist, are the following options. So we could have a corner or a cusp, we could have an endpoint, or we could have a discontinuity, so a place where the function isn't continuous. All this to say, we just want to be aware of when we take a derivative, there may be points where the derivative does not exist, and we need to be thinking about these and not trying to find tangent lines where the derivative doesn't exist, or to make any conclusions at points that are not differentiable. So that's it for this video, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.